Welcome to my channel. This is today's episode of Daily News Clips. Before I get to that, I want to thank you for coming to my channel, for viewing my videos, for subscribing to my channel, and for making my channel grow the way it has. I really do appreciate it. And I'm especially thankful for all the interaction I'm having with you in the comments. You just have no idea how much I enjoy that. So thank you very much. For today's news items, I have several things. The first one is an article entitled, Bits and Pieces Are Socialist Nuts? And this is an article by John Lucas on Substack, where he discusses a proposal by the left wing of the Democratic Party to, <laughs> to shorten the work week to four days. Now, whenever they talk about stuff like this, it always apparently makes sense to them. But if you just think it through logically, if you go to a four day work week, but you're still paying everyone exactly what you were paying them before, then you have to add people for the fifth day, or you have to cut production by 20%. So no matter how you slice that pie, you're going to end up raising prices, selling less product, and eventually going out of business. It just doesn't make any sense. I, I understand the ideal behind it. Oh, let's all have a four-day four work week so that we can have three days off and just enjoy life. But in the real world, it doesn't work that way. It can't work that way because you'll drive prices through the roof. People won't be able to afford your goods, so they won't get bought and you'll go out of business. It's that simple. As always, I put these links in the description so you can read them for yourself if you want. The second item I have is a Boeing whistleblower was found dead in his car by an apparent suicide. Now, the, the coroner's initial um, analysis was that he died of an apparent suicide, but the case is still being investigated. But this guy was on his way to do a deposition. Seems like a very odd time to pick to, to kill yourself. I hope that they investigate this thoroughly and find out what really happened because it doesn't seem like a suicide from all the indicators. But we'll find out. The next thing I have for you is a video that I would like you to watch. And this is by Michael Schellenberger, and it's a discussion about the WPATH files. We've talked about them before. That's the World Professional Association of Transgender Health, and their files have been exposed to the world, and it doesn't look pretty. Leaked files from the World Professional Association of Transgender Health are showing widespread medical malpractice on children and adults who seek care through the organization. The group Environmental Progress has published the raw files in a shocking new report. Environmental Progress founder Michael Schellenberger wrote, the WPATH files show that what is called gender medicine is neither science nor medicine. The experiments are not randomized, double blind or controlled. It's not medicine since the first rule is to do no harm and that requires informed consent. Joining us now to discuss is journalist and founder of Environmental Progress, Michael Schoenberger. Welcome, Michael. Thanks for having me. Well, this seems to be a very interesting, somewhat groundbreaking um, piece of, uh, of evidence. I, I think my first question to you would be around how do we juxtapose this with what the National Institutes of Health, the NIH, has to say about the vital importance of, of gender medicine, um, noting that it improves mental, mental health care, it improves health and well-being, particularly of transgender young people, um, those who are non-binary, and others who um, are at higher risk for things like suicide and hate crimes. Yeah, sure. Well, that's a great question. I mean, and that's one of the questions that people are going to have to answer over the next uh, coming years or decades. This is uh, something that's been endorsed by most major medical organizations. 
But when you lift the hood and you look underneath what's going on, what you find is that these organizations are relying on this organization called the World Professional Association of Transgender Health. And when we look at those files, which includes both these written files, but also videos, you see that the doctors, surgeons, therapists, and others that are involved in it, they admit that the parents and the kids do not understand that they are facing lifelong sterility as well as potentially a significant loss of sexual function. Um, they don't understand these treatments and that's called informed consent, which is right up there with do no harm. And so I think this is a really, um, this is you know a violation of medical ethics. They're also claiming that there's this evidence, but in fact, it's not scientific evidence. It's not evidence that's based on uh, you know properly controlled studies over time. The most shocking thing, one of the most shocking things, there's a lot of shocking things in there, is the ways in which they don't actually follow up with their patients. In other words, you'll see surgeons say, well, as far as we know, these things have gone well, or we don't know after six months, so you don't have a proper long-term study. And we do now know there's been uh, several studies now debunking this claim, this false claim, that somehow suicide risk is higher if you don't do these radical interventions. It appears as though quite the opposite is the case and that there's a huge amount of regret and much of what we see in the WPATH files are doctors and therapists dealing with detransitioners, dealing with people experiencing serious regret about the loss of their ability to have children or about their ability to uh, achieve sexual function in the ways that, that most people are able to. Yeah, I wanna follow up. So I'll put the link in the description for you. I also have another video that I want you to watch. It's on Prager and it's Chloe Cole, who underwent transition surgery and says it was the biggest mistake of her life. But I, I cut out, or, or I, I cued it up to one specific clip that I want you to hear. Maybe I'd just be better off as a boy. Using social media from a young age taught me to value my looks and very superficial parts of myself above all. The platform I mainly use Wow. Think about that for a minute. Using social media from a very young age taught her to value superficial things. That'll give you pause, won't it? If you have young children, it might make you think perhaps it's not a good idea for them to be on social media. Something to think about anyway. She goes on to tell her story and why she has now detransitioned, but of course she no longer has breasts because those were surgically removed. And God only knows what else they did to her. But I don't think, you know, <clears throat> there's a certain percentage of the people in the population who likely are really, or at least believe they are in the wrong body. And those people need help. They need psychiatric help. They, they may need surgical help. It just depends on the person. But the push that we have now to, to normalize it and to increase the number of people who are going through these surgeries is evil. It's destructive. It's horrible. And we really need for the truth to come out about this stuff so that children will not make life-changing decisions without understanding what that means that they will lose sexual function that they will no longer be able to have children that their life will never be the same again it's just it's terrible that our society is right now promoting this and i hope that that can change and it looks like the tide is beginning to turn the last item I have is KXAN reported people living in Texas can no longer log into and watch videos on Pornhub because the popular adult entertainment website cut off access to the state over an objection to its age verification law. Well, first of all, the very first thought that came to my mind was, why are you objecting, objecting to age verification when you know this is adult content? What would be your uh, legitimate objection to that? And then the second thought I had was, 
Oh, does this mean I'll no longer get all these spams from them? I certainly hope so, but I seriously doubt it. Anyway, that's today's news. As always, I'll put the links in the description so that you can follow up on these if you want to. And for you, my viewers, I pray that you will live an abundant life, that you will be healthy, that you will live a long time, and that God will keep you safe from harm. And I pray he'll do the same for every person that you love. And I also pray that you will be anxious for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, you will let your requests be made known to God. And the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam era vet out.